Good afternoon. Um, breaking news is it is snowing, in case you haven't noticed. I can tell you that firsthand. I've been driving all around the region. That is real news. That is not fake news. Uh, we'll talk about it in three different regions. You have the New York City region, the Hudson Valley region, and the Long Island region, and it's a little different depending on the region. Uh, in the Hudson Valley region, we expect about 7 to 12 inches when all is said and done. Uh, New York City, about 10 to 12 inches uh, when all is said and done. New York City, it should start to taper off about 2 o'clock. Hudson Valley, it will also start to taper off about 2 o'clock because the uh, storm is basically moving east. Uh, once again, Nassau, Suffolk, Long Island, will bear the brunt of the storm. I don't know what Nassau Suffolk did to offend Mother Nature, but they did something somewhere along the, re the way because it seems like Mother Nature always packs an especially potent punch for Nassau and Suffolk. Uh, I'll be going out there right after this briefing. Um, Nassau Suffolk, the, uh, the snow will continue to fall until about 5 or 6 o'clock which is problematic because that then gets us uh, right towards the rush hour. And uh, that is a bad combination. We've been keeping up with the snowfall, uh, even on Long Island, um, on the main roads. The secondary roads are problematic. Um, but come rush hour, the traffic increases, the snow increases, the visibility decreases, uh, this is a potentially dangerous situation. I would urge all motorists, especially on Long Island, to, uh, if you have to, be out on the road. If you really have to be out on the road, do whatever you have to do. Do it early and get off the road. I would uh, encourage business owners to consider closing early, especially on Long Island, to let people out early so they're not on the roads uh, at that five or six hour when uh, things are going uh, to be difficult. What is happening on Long Island as well as on the Hudson Valley, while you, in the Hudson Valley, where we're successful cleaning the main roads, the ramps on and off become problematic. And people get stuck on the ramps because there's an incline. And that then starts to back up traffic all across the board. And once you have a few cars stuck on a ramp, uh, the plows can't get in, the tow truck can't get in, and now you have a problem. Um, again, I'm on my way out to Long Island after this, and we'll have a more updated briefing, but I, I urge people, especially on Long Island, uh, where we have had very difficult situations in the past, to uh, exercise diligence uh, and consideration, and uh, business owners also in terms of uh, closing uh, their businesses early if it's convenient. Um, on the airports from the Port Authority, LaGuardia has uh, just under nine inches of accumulation now, 655 cancellations, 347 departures, and 308 arrivals have been canceled. Uh, the About 60 percent of the entire daily activity has been canceled. Airlines report no planned activity uh, until uh, later this evening, and even at that time, a uh, slow return to service. Newark basically the same with 618 cancellations, 340 departures, 278 arrivals. Uh, JFK has about six inches accumulation, 700 cancellations. The airport is open, but uh, the delays are extensive, and that will continue throughout the day. Uh, depending on how the snow does taper off, uh, hopefully we'll be in a position where uh, we can return to normal beginning tomorrow. The MTA, and you're going to hear from Ronnie Hakem from the MTA in a moment. Uh, the MTA did a, a very good job, I'm pleased to say. Uh, they uh, had notice of the storm, and they got ahead of it. Uh, and they did a good job this morning. Metro North, same thing. Uh, all in all, we have about 4,000 operators out there working. 
um, in a coordinated way. Best to let them do their job, and part of that is by staying off the road. With that, let me turn it over to uh, Ronnie Hakem for her report. We also have Kevin Wisely to my left, who uh, is in charge of emergency management. Ronnie? Thank you, Governor. Um, as the Governor noted, we had the advantage of knowing that this storm was coming. So based on our prior storm experience, we took proper precautions, and so our morning rush hour, as the Governor noted, ran relatively smoothly this morning. Our snow operations actually began last night when we laid up our subway trains in our underground tunnels so that they would be in good condition and ready to go this morning. And in flat fact, we were able to push our entire fleet out this morning for service. We are going to do that again this afternoon so that the fleet will again be ready for our evening rush hour. And throughout the day so far, we have not had any significant problems. We did um, cut back some of our bus service today, but knowing that we would have enough buses for the, uh, the demand, recognizing it's a light ridership day. Um, we have all the service that we need, but we don't want our buses um, getting stuck, and they are, of course, subject to our local road conditions. Most of our buses are equipped with chains. You'll see them out there. Um, but we encourage our bus riders and our bus customers to use our bus time app because that way they'll know where their buses are and when they're coming to their bus stop. We took, as the governor has noted, major preparation steps. We've had thousands of extra um, MTA staff out in our system doing everything from running snow removal machinery, sweeping, salting, um, ha ha making sure our stations and our platforms are in good condition for our customers, as well as being a available to respond to developments, developments as they arise. You know, service across our region has been proceeding without major interruptions or incidents. The railroads have experienced some sporadic delays due to snow accumulation, but nothing that is significantly affecting service at this time. As the governor notes, we are paying particular attention to Long Island. They are predicted to get heavy winds and as well as the most snow, which can add up to blizzard conditions. The governor has been encouraging early release by employers, so the Long Island Railroad has been responsive to that and has already scheduled four additional early getaway trains leaving Penn Station as early as 1.49 p.m. Metro North, of course, has plenty of capacity in its afternoon and evening rush service. I'm encouraging all customers, no matter what mode you ride in the MTA network, to follow us at mta.info, use our apps, Check our social media alerts to be aware of any service changes as we go through the afternoon and into this evening's rush hour. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Ronnie. Uh, I'm also directing any state agencies that are located on Long Island to uh, do an early release for non-essential personnel, uh, and that will start this afternoon. And as you heard from uh, Ms. Hakem, the LIRR has additional getaway trains. I like the sound of that, getaway <laughs> trains. Uh, so uh, the trains will be there, uh, but again, this is, um, we've been through this quite a few times, but uh, don't underestimate the potential danger. The uh, visibility is going to be very low. The snow is at a problematic level. And again, when there is a volume of cars on the road, the plows, the personnel can't even do their work. And all it takes is one car to get stuck and everything backs up, and then you have a major problem. So please, uh, every citizen of New York is part of this also. Be responsible, be diligent. I know everything has to be done today. Sometimes it really doesn't have to be done today. And uh, if you go out there, not only do you endanger yourself, but you endanger others. We have over 4,000 people out there who are working to keep people safe. And uh, we don't want to make it uh, uh, unnecessarily difficult for them. I've been on the roads. I am telling you, the roads are dangerous. And uh, I don't care if you have a four-wheel drive car and you think you're a superhero. Uh, they are dangerous. And many of the ramps are very, very difficult to, uh, to drive. So if you don't have to be out, don't be out. Questions? Was there ever any thought of shutting down the subways preemptively or? We've done that in the past. You know, these are all very tough calls, Zach. You don't want to overreact. You don't want to underreact. 
I tend to err on the side of caution. Why? Because we've been in situations where people could have died. Uh, luckily, no one has as a consequence of our action. I believe there was a casualty today. Somebody had a heart attack shoveling snow. But uh, I've been, I've been uh, on highways in the middle of the night with people stranded in cars at 3 o'clock in the morning where the car runs out of gasoline and they can't keep the heat on. Uh, and it gets very frightening uh, uh, very quickly. So I take these situations very seriously. And you listen to the weather forecast. Sometimes uh, they change. You make the best judgment you can. Again, I err on the side of caution. But in this case, uh, no, we did not seriously consider closing the subways. Uh, it is always a possibility. Closing subways, closing roadways is a possibility. We did do a tandem trailer ban on uh, certain roads, 84, et cetera, more in the Hudson Valley. These are the uh, tractor trailers that, that have uh, two trailers on them. But we have not closed any roads we don't anticipate closing any roads or closing the subways or closing the airports, but that is something uh, that we always consider. The state basically is responsible for airports, buses, trains, uh, state roads, and um, we are constantly weighing what to do with each of them. If the weather forecast stays as predicted and people do what they should do, I think we'll be okay. In terms of the commuter rails, what do you know about ridership this morning compared to usual? It's been very low. So Metro North saw basically 30% of their normal weekday ridership. Long Island Railroad similarly very low uh, ridership at this, at this point. Does that help? It does. But remember, we still run our scheduled service. So, you know, we are running trains on the rail because that also keeps the rail free and helps us assure that in the evening rush we'll have uh, train service available for people when they need it. Okay. Have you spoken to the mayor and what kind of coordination do you have with uh, both your offices? The teams have been talking all day, I believe starting yesterday, Zach. Uh, you know, we do the in New York City, we are responsible for the subways, the airports, the buses, uh, so uh, we want to make sure that we coordinate with what the mayor is doing on the roads and more that they know what we're doing. I know you're heading to Long Island, but if you could just recap, um, I know you said you're not closing roads, but has any, uh, if you could describe what you plan on doing with the LIE, uh, um, and uh, are there any plans for, uh, you know, closing down the LIRR, or just if you could clarify? More about what's happening on the, the there's no plan to close down the Long Island Railroad or the subways uh, at this time. They're up, they're running. The preparation was done. Uh, as I mentioned before, I thought it was done uh, very well. So we haven't had any major delays on mass transit. The keeping people off the roads is very important. And we've had a number of incidents on the roads uh, in the Hudson Valley. We have quite a few people stuck on ramps, which then backs up traffic. On the Long Island Railroad, we ha on, I'm sorry, on the Long Island Expressway, we currently, as we sit here, have quite a few ramps with people stuck on them. Um, and this is a problem. The fear is, as you get closer to rush hour and the volume increases on the roads, and the visibility decreases and the snow increases, this is going to be a problematic situation. So businesses consider early release, use mass transit if you have to, or just stay off the roads. But we know, as it is now, it is problematic. There are many, many on and off ramps on the LIE where cars are stuck right now and we're deploying tow trucks, et cetera. But uh, this just cascades. One car gets stuck. That backs up 15 cars. And then the tow truck can't get through, the plow can't get through, and you have a major situation. 
and they are now developing. And the only way to safeguard it is keeping people off the roads. You know, there are uh, people think, you know, they're, they're great drivers, and I'm sure they are, and they have uh, great vehicles. It doesn't matter. You know, once the snow turns to ice or the slush turns to ice and you try going up a hill and uh, you get stuck, uh, that's it. That is it. And you can sit there for hours and you can cause major uh, obstacles for a lot of people. So that's the fear. If it is, uh, I'm going to now look at the roads on my way out to Long Island. Uh, if it is uh, more than I... Uh, discussed, or if it's getting worse, then we'll take more action. On the question from Zach before, you know, this is you calibrate this as you go through the day and you adjust your actions to the conditions. You go with the weather forecast, but sometimes that changes. I want to be careful what I say because one storm, what I said was viewed as critical of uh, the weather forecast and I was bombarded by weather people from across the country. So uh, I'm not going to make that mistake again. Uh, but you look at the actual conditions, and then you adjust your reaction to the actual conditions. And if it gets worse, we'll take more action. Okay? Thank you very much.